our next uh, presentation is going to be from Nandine uh, Erdin Shatar, uh, going to speak to us about the Mongolian Aerospace Research and Science Association. Welcome, uh, Nandine. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. We are connecting from uh, everywhere around the world. So, uh, thank you for introducing, and first of all, thank you uh, for Mr. Robert Zubrin and Mars Society team for granting us such an amazing opportunity to introduce our projects during annual Mars Society convention. It's a, such an honor. So I'm going to talk about our current project, Mars V, today. So let me share my screen now. So can you see the presentation now? Yes, that looks great. Okay. okay, so thank you. So I would like to start this uh, presentation with a little story, little story of how we found out the idea. So, uh -uh. sorry, technical thing. So please look at these pictures. So how do you feel about them? I guess somehow they might give you some impression about as if you are in a different planet. But the truth is, these places on the picture, they are all in Mongolia, especially in Mongolian Gobi Desert. So same like this, a few years ago, our founder uh, saw a Mars picture from by the rover. And first thing on his mind was, this place is, looks very similar to Mongolian Gobi. This is how he found out the idea of Mars V project. And then after seeing the picture of Mars planet, he made a more deep research to find out, is there any other similarities between Mars and Gobi desert? Actually, the result was amazing and he found out and we found out certain things. So in here, so he, here's the result. So Mongolian Gobi is the fifth large desert in the world out of 2024. And it is the most identical place with the Mars because climate of Gobi desert reaches plus and minus 40 Celsius degree, which is very diverse uh, as in Mars. And Gobi is not only special, Gobi is not only special because of some certain identical points with Mars planet, but there are more statements which make Gobi unique, uh, namely in terms of renewable energy. So it is a place with, Mongolian Gobi is a place with rich resource of solar and wind renewable energy. One third of the world's renewable energy resource is in here, is in Mongolia. So these facts um, gave us a motivation and confidence to start our project Mars V last year. So in short, our project mission here is to prepare an environment that is the closest to Mars and train individuals to improve their mental and physical knowledge and to increase their teamwork and adaptive skill. For accomplishing that mission, we started our project with three men big establishments where tech places in Mongolian Gobi deserts. So these three men establishments are first comprehensive training academy and space exploration and development free zone and satellite city. So I will give uh, information about each of them now. So first and most important thing is comprehensive training academy for survival and adaptation. So this academy will enable, uh, enable professional astronauts, pilots, and tourists to attend training at complex center with Mars-like environment. It will have uh, multiple facilities for training practice and preparation, and each facility has its own purpose to prepare people's mindset to survive on Mars. Actually, adaptive and survival skill is one of the most important 
skill that people should learn and practice before they landing on Mars. In fact, there are many places and programs um, to train human resource to land on Mars, but from the point of landscape and ecosystem, Mongolian Gobi will be a perfect place for that, for train human resource. And second main establishment is a free zone, space exploration free zone. So free zone will establish test field and facilities for international startup companies to test their new space technologies and create an integrated supply network for space technology development. In other words, there will be economically, legally, and physically favorable environment for testing and developing new space technologies to colonize Mars. And the last big establishment will be satellite city. So definitely there will be a population growth following the first two establishments, academy and free zone. So satellite, a satellite city uh, will be hosting place for scientists, entrepreneurs and tourists. So here is our imagination and pre-planned image of how the academy look like and how Friesland look like in Gobi. So in the next, um, I, want, I want to talk about what makes Mongolia distinctive. Earlier, I mentioned only Gobi's special factors, why Gobi is perfect place to accomplish this project. So now let's focus on why Mongolia. So Mongolia is a 19th big country, the largest territorial country in the world, and which is located in Eurasia, but it is a landlocked country. So the concept of landlocked country, it sounds, uh, seems like a disadvantage, maybe earlier, but not anymore. Because further location from water will be the perfect to test space technologies, rockets and vehicles because it's so far from ocean, quite safe to test it. So although we have no access to ocean and water, we have access to space, open space, we believe that. And here is more advantages and special points why Mongolia is a perfect place to carry out this project. So Mongolia have a four seasons, which is very diverse. And Mongolia is one of the loved human density country in the world especially Gobi's most un uninhabited place and quite isolated. And one third of the pro world's renewable energy resource is in Mongolia. So which means we have, we can create uh, enough energy to uh, support the process, like uh, operation of this three big establishment. And uh, geopolitically, um, we are close to the world's two big economies, one of the biggest economies, China and Russia. And we are also a nuclear free zone with a free market economy. And here are some legal advantages you can check on the slides. So in short, Mongolia has, a, Mongolia has advantage to start this project. So in the next part, um, I will give information about international ties. So. Uh, it's a giant project with uh, big establishments. We need to keep a cooperative and tight relationship with both domestic and international partners. So let me mm, mention quick about our team, team of Mars V project. So currently there are over 100 people are working for this project to making a research and studies such as Gobi landmark research, and legal research and so on. And moreover, there are over 2000 volunteers who want to contribute to the project. So recently the project is getting very popular in Mongolia. So in terms of foreign relation, we have presented our project to global leaders. So Last year, August, we presented our project to Donald Trump and the next, mo next month, Vladimir Putin and, and then Indian Prime Minister Nirendra Modi. So this project is 
um, presented to their global leaders. Moreover, we also uh, have uh, established a cooperative and friendly relationship with the national space agencies, such as JAXA, NASA, Roscosmos, and ISRA, European space agencies, and also the biggest uh, Mars exploration communities, including Mars Society and MIPAC, IMEWG. So let me um, talk about, maybe some of you might wonder that um, our mission, connecting mankind's vision to reach Mars sounds a bit vague or abstract. So let's talk more precisely about it. So according to a private Dutch organization, Mars One, there are over 200,000 people who had interest to travel to Mars. But in reality, we believe that there are millions and millions of people around the world who has interest in space travel and tourism. But currently, only seven uh, space tourists um, made eight space flights to international space stations since 2000. The publicized price uh, was ranged at 20 to 25 million US dollar for per trip. So in this case, people consider the space tourism is uh, expensive and risky thing. So therefore our goal is to reduce that cost of space tourism and maybe the 100,000 times with a high satisfaction. That's why we called, why we choose Mars for, Mars for everyone as our motto. So we firmly believe that by experiencing genuine space exploration feeling on earth will positively impact on humankind's mind. Because according to some researchers, the world's population is expected to reach 9.8 billion by 2050, nearly 10 billion. But our world, Earth, has limited resources to feed this lot of population. So it will result in food crisis and water scarcity and power supply shortage. So these facts demands us to obtain certain survival skill and not only to protect our nature or earth, but also to producing more resources, new resources on different planets. So in order to reside in Mars, in outer space, we need to have a very identical um, place like Mars on earth to train mankind and to test space technologies for Mars exploration. So for this matter, Mars View project can be very a great partner in, in your building the Mars city on the red planet. So we believe that before we landing on Mars, we need to practice ourselves and human resources on earth. So I would like to end my presentation with a quote from Albert Einstein. So Albert Einstein once say that the logic will get you from A to B. But imagination will take you everywhere. So as we know, as we can see, there are some big entrepreneurs like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, or Richard Branson. They are making history. And we are at Mars. We have a piece of gem that could benefit humankind's dream. Together we can do, and together we can make a history. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, my name is David Haslam. I am uh, one of the hosts for the Mars conference. And um, my camera is still not working. Anyway, um, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we've got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. oh, I would also like to uh, introduce my teammate, Tolra. Oh, sure. And he's with me to answer the questions yeah you can answer the question I'm yeah listening. i'm here um just uh by your side okay very I'm good very good well the first question is um what is the website uh the the bruce mckenzie is asking what the website is 
having trouble finding M A R S A on the web. So you could bring the website. Okay. Um, I will share it to the chat. Okay. Yeah. Marsv.com. Mars dash V.com. Mars dash V as in visitor dot com. Uh, yeah, I will. Let me write yeah. it. Yes. A question from Natso. Uh, tying back to Tabor McCollum's Biosphere 2 project, could the fact that the Gobi Desert's having much colder temperatures than the say, uh, Sonoran Desert, give you any advantage to any scientific experiments? Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're currently in the very early stages of the um, development, especially when it comes to programs on research for Mars and um, uh, space technology and et cetera. So as of right now, we can't give you a 100% sure on a comparison or a um, any um, certain types of advantages at the moment. OK. OK. From a personal standpoint, I'm sure the lower temperatures will give you a closer analogy to Mars, even if it's not all the way to an extremely yeah. low temperature. But yeah. Uh, and again, a uh, oh, a personal culture. question. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, they're the more hottest or coldest, uh, more colder and hotter uh, desert um, than the Mongolian Gobi Desert. But as like a very diverse, both hot and cold, a reach from um, minus forty to plus forty. It is yeah, Mongolia. Mongolian uh, special thing is. It is both cold and hot in the year. Okay. Good. I have a personal question. Uh, so for the um, initial academy uh, for the Gobi Desert, how are you planning to organize that? Is it a physical on-site academy or online or a combination of both? And uh, what's the approximate price range to join the academy? Mm -hmm. It will be a physical on site, um, first of all. And yeah, so price range. Now, currently, we are doing a pre feasibility study. So now we are planning that, like, how much it will cost to build the establishment. But for paying for, um, we are still uh, making a research, research on that. And currently, about our team, uh, or nearly 200 um, team members is divided to 19 teams, like specific teams about Gobi research and program making team and uh, uh, itinerary creating team like this. So they are making, uh, still developing the programs in the academy and then they will um, also uh, calculate how much it will cost to participate. Okay, very good. Hey, we don't have any other questions at this point in time. Um, but uh, didn't, in the past, this is again a quick personal question because there's nothing else coming up. Um, didn't uh, Mongolia fly an astronaut with um, Soyuz missions a long time ago? Yeah, yeah, uh, 1981. Okay. Yeah, five, five minutes. Mm hmm yeah, and uh, wow. our first and only and currently astronaut of Mongolia who went to space with Russian uh, team in 1981 is uh, our uh, working as an our advisor for our project. Huh. Interesting. So, so is there a, because I know the astronauts are American and Western cosmonauts, the Soviet Sinonauts or Chinese. Is there a special name for Mon Mongolian astronauts? No. Um, so Mr. Uh, Gurakcha, who flew in 81, is uh, classified as a cosmonaut. 
Okay, very good. So if you have a more question and want to know more about our uh, project, you can uh, visit our website and see the contact information there. And we are willing to answer every question of you and we are willing to give a more information if you want in the later. Very good. Well, I know I'll be, I'll be in contact with you. <laughs> I'm very interested in this. Thank you. So, so thank you very much for your time. Um, I believe, well, we still have a few minutes, so, um, let's see. There's plenty of people watching too. <laughs> so are you, are you guys currently in Mongolia then? Yeah, we are. And, uh, yeah, uh, we, if we have a few minutes and uh, there's no one to ask questions, so I can give uh, some details about also uh, our foreign honorary advisors. So it is a very big project for Mongolians, and but it's a very big ambition um, for us. So currently we have nearly 10 foreign advisors, 10, for, uh, 10 foreign advisors, honorary advisors, who is ex who are experts in the space in, in the space industry okay. so yeah one of them is Alisa Carson maybe all of you know and uh, she is also one of our advisor and when the time is um, when the pandemic the COVID situation will be gay again and she and other advisors expressed they wish to come to Mongolia and see uh, and visit the Mongolian Gobi personally in person very good we have one minute. Minute left. Mm -hmm. So, what time is it currently in Mongolia? It is uh, midday, exactly midday. midday. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm actually speaking of Singapore, so I'm mm. even further around the world than you. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was saying good morning, afternoon, and evening. Yeah, very good. I, I appreciated this. <laughs> All right. Well, very good. Thank you both very, very much indeed for Thank attending you. the conference and speaking to us. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Okay.